Hi there, GuruRed here, and today I'm going to show you how to use an Arduino Boy. But first off, what is an Arduino Boy? To put it simply, it's an Arduino Game Boy. Sounds simple enough, but what's an Arduino? An Arduino is a small computer that generally only runs one program, and that's the program you write. So, it's very different from something like a Raspberry Pi, which is running a full operating system, and is very, very powerful, can do lots of different things, can be a little tricky to work with. For instance, if you pull the power on a running Raspberry Pi, it's running all sorts of programs in the background that you may not know about. They could be writing to the SD card, and when you pull the power, you could corrupt the disk, and then you beat your Pi up again, and oh no, it's not working anymore. Little things like that um, can cause problems, especially for people who aren't aware of it. A Raspberry Pi is a brilliant tool, but it's also a very powerful tool, and sometimes it's a little over the, you know, it's OTT. You don't need that much power for a small project. If you just want to print something to a screen, just play around with some code, or just have a toy, really. So the Arduino Boy, being an Arduino, is very, very different. Basically, um, it doesn't need as much power, it's much simpler to program for, and you can get started with far fewer extras. All you really need for an Arduino is your normal PC, the Arduino Boy, and a micro USB cable. That is it. Nothing else. So you don't need to worry about, say, Raspberry Pi, where it's like, okay, we need a mouse, a keyboard, maybe a Wi-Fi stick, depending if you've got the new Pi or the old Pi, maybe a HDMI cable, which mod I'm going to plug in, etc, etc. Arduino Boy... Just plug it into your regular PC. Now, um, why am I recommending the Ardo Boy over uh, a normal Arduino? Well, it depends. Arduinos are generally more useful for Internet of Things projects and things like that. So just to show you what a normal Arduino looks like, sort of like this. So it's a board, lots of pins you can see there. For You can control and program and things like that. You're supposed to add extra sensors on top and wiring wires and things like that. So if you've got a project in mind, brilliant. If you don't, and that looks a little scary to you, it's probably best not to go for that model. The Ardo Boy, as you can see, already has a lot of things attached. So it already has a screen, so it's already got output for you. It already has buttons, which means it has input for you, and it even has a little speaker. So, you know, you can play songs on it and things like that. Not super detailed ones, but still, it's, um, you know, chiptune style things. And it's just cool. So um, it does come with an inbuilt battery, which is another major plus. So it can power itself, as long as you've kept it plugged in over USB. And you can play games on it. What sort of games, you wonder? Well, it does vary. So stuff you write to start with probably isn't going to be the next Flappy Bird, but it can be quite fun. But there's a lot of games available already that look really, really cool. So if I just show you some of it running, we can see here, here's the Arto Boy running. So I'm playing, you can see they're playing a 2D platforming game, which is, actually looks quite detailed as akin to the original Game Boy style of graphics and quality. That's a 128 by 64 pixel uh, monochrome pix uh, monochrome screen uh, with you know that many pixels doesn't look too bad and the cool thing is it's completely open so you can you know find this game online pull down the code modify it play with it and just have have fun and learn so i'd recommend the arduino uh, the arduino boy as a learning tool uh, and also a toy it's good fun to play even if you don't want to learn how to program it's very easy to learn how to put the games on here and just play with them because this thing is absolutely tiny look at her hands for scale and you can clearly see this thing would fit in fit anywhere and it's much much smaller than competing projects the one downside i would say is because the memory is internal you can only really stick one game on at a time and the memory is quite small i'll dig out the spec later but we're talking kilobytes not even megabytes here but that's how the arduino platform works very low power cheap to integrate into your projects things like that but there are limitations so now you've seen the arduino boy how do you get started with one well first you'll need to get an arduino boy so I recommend if you're in the UK, Pim Aroni. Um, again, my go-to people for all sorts of things like this. They're one of the only stockists I know about in the UK. There are probably others, but I've always had no trouble getting stock from these guys, so I'd recommend, recommend them here. If you're in America, Adafruit, obviously. If you're elsewhere, you may want to go through the official Kickstarter page of the Adafruit itself. However, I think that covers the vast majority of people who are watching this video. Right, so you've got an Arduino Boy. What else do you need? As I mentioned, you need a regular micro USB cable. So that's the same one you will have with your with your phone. So it's a very standard connector. If we just look at a picture of it here, you can clearly see it's just that kind of connector. So normal big fat USB end and a small end that normally goes into your phone. And that's it. You probably have these lying around. If you don't, Amazon has them cheap, eBay, wherever. 
Right, so now you've got those two things. Now what do you need to do? Well, you're going to need some software to start working here, but because the Arduino Boy is an Arduino, it is fully supported by the Arduino software stack. So Arduinos were, were invented originally as an educational tool, so they are very good at this. They're, in fact, they predate the Raspberry Pi itself by some time. So you can easily get the software. You get that from www.arduino.cc. Avoid getting it from elsewhere. Again, as I said in other videos, get your software from the source. Don't just go to random sites, repackage it because you don't know what you're getting. Um, I haven't played with the web editor, so I'm not going to go into detail about that. I'd recommend you get the desktop editor, so Windows installer for Windows, Mac for Mac, and Linux, depending on what kind of Linux you've got. And just to point out, you can run this on a Raspberry Pi if you get the Linux ARM build, which is absolutely awesome. You can also just do sudo apt-get install. If you're familiar with how Raspberry Pi install software, you can just get Arduino very easily. I have used this before um, at a code club I help out with. Um, and it's just amazing to have the kids using Raspberry Pi as the programming device, but the Arduino is the actual target they're working with. It saves a lot of money than having to buy each child their own, you know, desktop PC or Mac or whatever. Right, so now you've got the software. Now what you do, well, you open it up and you'll see an editor like this, which is a bit like, ooh, I don't know what this is. It's very simple. It's just a standard IDE, which it's lots of acronyms in programming and tech and things like that. But what it basically means is this is a tool that lets you edit text files that, you know, to enter code into that will become your programs. That's it. Sounds fancy. Actually quite a simple idea. But you will have to do a few more tweaks to make it work with your Ardu Boy. So what you need to do is you need to go into File here and Preferences. And you're going to need to add a URL here, which I'll stick below the video so you can cut and paste it. But you see there, basically, it's a JSON file, which is just a text file, basically, put it simply, that contains information about settings that you need to run the Ardu Boy. So you basically, you need to add that there. So just leave it up so you can read it a bit. Okay, and then you just click OK on your settings. And then what you need to do is you need to go to your tools and your board menu, which is here. Now, I've already got Arduino installed because I've played a bit before, obviously, but you'll need to do a few more steps to get this to work. So what we can do is you click your boards manager and then you just search for Arduino. There we go. And you've got this. So because we've added that, your uh, that JSON file, we can now see this uh, new information. Obviously, I have it installed. You will just click the install button, which would already be here, and away you go. And once you've got that, you're going to get all the core libraries and tools that you will need to run your Arduino Boy. It's nice and simple. So, once you've done that, you'll need to run a program. You, you know, need an idea of how do I actually program on this thing. Now, the Arduino language is basically C, C++. This can be a little tricky. It's one of the harder languages, but it's everything simple when you know how. I'm going to show you a very simple code sample that just prints some text on screen. If you want to get more involved, that's great. You probably don't need my help to do that if you're thinking of that already. If you need a little more help, there are lots of resources on the internet on how to learn. Uh, the best thing I find is just to pull, look at programs that people have written, start poking and pulling them apart and trying to figure things out. I'd heavily recommend EDX. So if you've not seen it, so there's lots of lots of free tutorials online, free courses, EDX, Coursera, lots of things if you just want to learn how to program. And there's also a very good MIT C++ course. Here we go. This one is one I recommend if you're a complete beginner. It's a completely free course. It's all online. It's all complete. So there's no like, oh, I have to wait for this video to come up. No, it's all there. And if you just Google MIT C++, it's the first, pretty much the first result there. And you know it's the right one because it's got a wonderful XKCD comic at the top. Right. So, you know, either you know about C++ or you don't, but that doesn't mean you... you that doesn't stop you getting started with the Arduino Boy. So I'll just show you how to do a basic program first. So what you will need is the Arduino Boy code. So Arduino Boy sample code lives at HTTPS github.com forward slash Arduino Boy. Simple enough. And if we click on the Arduino Boy repository... Oh, look, it's got lots of things here. Oh, they're all scary. I don't know what's going on. Don't worry about that. Ignore all of this. I mean, read the readme probably. But what we're looking for really is this examples folder because this contains all the things we need. So there's lots of different games here to play with and muck around with. The one we're looking at is the simplest one, which is a Hello World. All we're going to do is print Hello World on screen. 
it's called. Oh, hello world.eno. What's that? Don't worry. Just a text file. Just how Arduino saves its files. Don't worry about that too much. The important thing is we can look at the code. See here. Thanks, David. Um, the man who's uh, written this for us. You can see it's doing very simple stuff. It's just saying includes an Ardu boy header. Make an instance of the Ardu boy object so we can play around with it. In the setup function, so just to let you know how an Arduino works, there's two main functions. The setup runs once when you start up, so you can initialize things. And there's a loop that just runs while you have the system on, pretty much, and it will just do everything in this function and then repeat it again. So what we're going to do here is going to set up the Arduino boy, set the framework of the Arduino boy to 15 FPS, and then we're going to start looping. And what it's going to do is it's basically going to print hello world again and again and again and again. So that's all it's doing. And you can see he's quite clearly commented what's going on in what order. So let's just steal all this wonderful code. He <laughs> So we're going to steal this code. And then we're going to paste it into our existing sketch. Cool. So you can see now we've added all our Arduino Boy references before with that JSON file and etc. You can see it understands what we're talking about. In fact, if I click the verify button, there should be a... Yep. Yeah, whatever. Doesn't matter what you save it as. There we go. You can see it's going to compile and be happy that it's compiled. Cool. So it's compiled and that means everything works and our libraries are found and all the Arduino Boy stuff is working, which is brilliant. Now you see down here, this is kind of important. So I mentioned before the Arduino Boy doesn't have all the memory in the world. So you can see even though this program is only around 10K, so 10,000 bytes or so, it's actually using about 40% of the program's entire storage space. Eep. Don't worry, a lot of that is just the Arduino Boy stuff to begin with, but just be aware if you have very large collections or you want to have very intricate images or things like that, you might run out of memory. So just be careful, you are working on a, a very cool platform, but also a very small platform in terms of memory space, and keep that in mind. Right, so we have a program, and it looks cool. So how's it actually look? Well, I'm going to flash this onto my Arduino Boy pretty much now and show you how it looks from here, and then I'm going to run it. So... If I actually connect this up properly, so again, it's just a Mark USB cable, nice and simple. Plug that into your computer. Again, it couldn't be easier. This is probably the easiest way to use an Arduino I've ever seen, because I have used many different kinds of Arduino, and the Arduino Boy is super duper easy to use, because it's only just got the one USB thing you plug in. And now we have the Arduino Boy plugged in. We have verified the program works, we've compiled the program, so we just need to switch our Arduino Boy on. There's a little switch at the top, you can hear it, it's being picked up on the USB. And all you need to do is upload, that's it. That's all you have to do, I've written a program. Oh, it's uploaded my program. What? Oh, that was cool. The one I have put my program on is the red one, so that's going to be the Hello World one. And the one of the more interesting program that you can get from the samples page I showed you is on here. So, you just saw me flash my Arduino Boy. Remember, just to let you know, the power button I was talking about is that little thing at the top there. So let's move away from the window. Can you see that little sort of yellowy white button up there? So you can see where my finger is there. Just make sure that's switched to on. So you'll see in a minute. Yeah. There we go. So it just so it's moved over to the right there. And oh look. My audio voice, that's what it's doing. Our code said, say hello world. And that is what it's doing. Pretty cool. Now, yeah, I know... This obviously isn't the most amazing thing in the world. I'm just showing you how to code it and how easy. That was a couple of minutes of work. That was it. And now we got our own program. We wrote our own code. And we stuck it on here. That was really cool. And that's that's it. Basically, I can switch it off while it's running. Oh, it's off. And I can switch it on again if I can get little fingers. Bing. And it works. Now, on a Raspberry Pi, obviously, you wouldn't just switch the power on off and, and pull the plug in and out. On a Raspberry Pi, you wouldn't even have a battery. So that's it's really useful that it does that. And this battery lasts for hours. So it's brilliant. Um, and you can also see just how small it is here. So this is absolutely tiny. I mean, I have relatively big hands, but still, that is that is tiny, tiny thing. Right, so what does a cool, what does a more interesting program look like? Let's have a look. So there's a space shooter game I downloaded from GitHub, put onto my blue Ardo Boy. If we just put it on here. It... So I'm just going to try and get it with my thumb, because these buttons can be a little fiddly, because they're recessed, but that's probably for the best, really, because you don't want to accidentally switch them off or on. There we go. So here we go. Here's the blue one. There we go. You can see, oh, I've got a cool little space game here. So the games can, you know, be very 
very complex. Oh, for what's an Arduino, basically. I mean, I'm I'm very impressed that someone came up with this idea. I'm really glad they did. There are s some small alternatives, but nothing in such a sleek and complete package and also easy to use package. Uh, you know, this is probably... If I was going to tell someone to get an Arduino, I'd say get this because you don't need to buy a load of extra bits and bobs. You just, you buy one thing and that's it. And obviously, if you want to hook up sensors or things like that or, you know, have some sort of project that sits outside and, I don't know, you know, tells you when the uh, when the sun's gone down, obviously, this is not... This is not a tool for that. This is a tool for learning how to program. It's a tool for playing games on. It's a toy for just having fun with. Um, but I would say it, it's it's a great way to learn how these things work. Like, there's no other games console I know of that just says, hey, here I am, muck around with me, flash my internal memory, do what you want, and you can play games on me that easily. And also you can edit the game. So if someone's made this game I'm playing here, I'm going to have to switch it off. I can change the code on that, so I could say I can make it easier, I could make the ship fly around faster, I could do whatever. Right, so there you go. That is how you flash game onto an Arduino. And that's what it looks like. And there we go. That's pretty much all there is to an Arduino. I would heavily call out the community pages. Just if you've got any problems, any questions, anything like that, the Arduino community is brilliant. It is quite small compared to the Raspberry Pi community but it is full of brilliant people who will answer your questions, so don't be intimidated, just be polite. And that's just at community.arduboy.com. There we go, see up there. And it's just, I've asked lots of questions here. The, the guy who made the Arduboy, he sits on this forum and he answers questions, and you can find a lot about the games and how to do stuff. So, you know, there's, there's threads on pretty much, pretty much everything here. Um, and as I'd also say, you want to be looking at the... Audubon demonstrations. So if you look here in examples, we've got more interesting games. There's a breakout clone. There's samples and the buttons. If you want to learn how to program, this is probably the place. How to program the Audubon specifically, this is definitely the place to start. Uh, but I've I've this I've never found an Arduino as easy to work as I have with the Audubon. So there you go. There is the Audubon, and that is how you use it.